Hi, welcome to a special edition podcast. I'm your host, Barrington Miller from the Canadian Securities Exchange, Director of Issuer Engagement. Why is this a special podcast? Because we are celebrating International Women's Day at the CSE. And I thought I would kick it off interviewing founder and CEO of Yummy Candy, Erica Williams. Thank you for joining us, Erica. Thank you, Barrington. I'm happy to be here. How's your day going? How was your International Women's Day going? Oh, it's going good. You know, always busy in the office and busy is always a good thing. So we're we're cracking along. Uh, before we start getting into the, the heart and meat of the matter, there are some members of our audience and our listeners might not know um, a bit about Yummy Candy. So I was wondering if you could tell us what, what Yummy Candy is and what it is you do being the founder and CEO. Yeah, I founded a company called um, Yummy Candy. It, we are a better for you confectionery company. So we pride ourselves in offering low sugar options, vegan options into the confectionery market. Um, we launched a flagship product, product called Yummy Bear, and it's been a huge success. It's a spin on your traditional type of gummy bear, but with a healthier twist. So, you know, three grams of sugar per bag, um, vegan, and it has no artificial sweeteners or sugar alcohol. So it's honestly a great candy for everyone. Um, and we're, it's this an exciting company. It comes from the heart. It comes from, you know, my background and, you know, the health and fitness, which I'm sure we'll dive into a little bit deeper, but, um, yeah, it definitely started as a passion project and, and grew and here we are today. Uh, because I work at the stock exchange, I am, uh, I've been, I've had a front row seat at seeing a lot of companies list. And I think we are over 700 and way to go CSE. Uh, but what I haven't seen are a lot of female CEOs. And for the purpose of these interviews, uh, please, when I say female CEOs, people that identify as well. So I'm, <laughs> that's my, uh, that's my disclaimer. So I don't have to keep saying it throughout, but we don't have a lot, um, in that position. And so I, we thought it was worthwhile to let's, let's talk a little bit about your journey and how you, I guess, got to be uh, in the position that you are. When did, when did this start for you? Yeah. Um, I know that's a, that's a good question. I mean, there's obviously a long winded <laughs> version, so I could definitely try and summarize it up, but um, I've always been an entrepreneur mindset from a very young age. I think I started, well, my parents tell the story better, but I started a project back when I was, you know, five or six and then, you know, projects in high school and on and on and on. So it's, it's just been something that I've always been, you know, drawn to and interested in and, you know, developing my skill set and everything. Um, so I, I, I did actually look before our interview, I looked how many, I think it's 4% of women CEO on publicly traded companies in Canada. So it is a low percentage. Um, but I'm happy to be a part of that and, and show other women what's possible. You know, I think there is a lot of, um, I think it's two things too, is just seeing other women, but, um, showing, showing what's possible in, in your own kind of arena. Right. And, um, it's been a crazy journey. So I started in the health and fitness space, um, selling sports nutrition products kind of on the ground floor. Um, I went to, you know, all the major trade shows and really I was, had that pulse of what people were looking for in terms of healthier, better for you options. I was a fitness coach myself. I did fitness competitions. So it really started at a young age. I was just drawn to, um, you know, all of these things that kind of melted together to make this business, whether it was, you know, doing fitness competitions, um, you know, coaching people with their own healthy lifestyles, doing sales for other companies and growing their businesses. Um, and then just wanting to create my own product, my own brand that, you know, I, I would use myself as a consumer, you know, I had clients and loved ones that were looking for healthier options too. Um, and just seeing that it's a growing industry. So, you know, all of those, there's, there's lots of stories and, you know, we can dive deeper, but um, yeah, it, it's been a crazy journey looking back. And I think, you know, obviously I'm only getting started. The company's only getting started. So we're very excited, but um, it's been one of those things that if, 
you know, there are other women looking at this or younger women, especially because, you know, they might be interested in, you know, taking this path is just, you know, follow, follow your passion, follow, you know, those callings where you're like, oh, this sounds like an excited opportunity. You know, it might not be exactly in your arena, but it's going to set you up for something in the future. So it's always, it's like that, you know, that statement, you can connect the dots looking backwards, but you can't look, connect them looking forward. Right. Well, so I look at my life. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I look at my life. It, as kind of, <laughs> exactly. Right. So I think it is good to show that there are other women entrepreneurs and um, ultimately though, kind of on that place of gender, I think it's um, great to see more women, but also it's, it's who's the best for, for the job period. And that's kind of how we like to look at people, right. Is who's, who's the best fit. What are their skill set? What's their mindset? Um, you know, what type of delivery do they have? So um, I don't always, I like to honor, you know, women and, and gender and everything like that, but also keeping it, um, you know, open to everyone. It's, it's not about hiring women. It's about making sure, and it doesn't extend just to women, but it's making sure that everyone has the same opportunity, that the loving, yes. the, uh, the playing field is level. And I think that's, that is really the definition of, of equality. And mm -hmm. you have entered into the, the capital markets at a very, very interesting time. And I say that because of social media and the presence mm -hmm. of social media and the accessibility that now people can see you, they can see your brand, they can see your company, they can see your products. You, you don't have to travel far in order to, to connect. And I think, um, I think that's really, I think that's helping. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I would. Yeah, I would I'll totally you, agree. You talk. Yeah, I would totally agree. I mean, kind of on that level, like it, it opens my mind up and lets people see, you know, there are a lot of strong women in leadership and C-level type of roles in business. And it's allowed me to connect with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, which I love doing and being a part of those networks, because ultimately, you know, if you are, you know, a certain position, you do want to have those, you know, other support systems. So I've kind of utilized social media on my own personal aspect for those reasons. Um, but I think it's great because it gives you, you know, basically a free platform to promote yourself, to market yourself, to promote your business, to share with the world, you know, who you are and what you're about. No longer does it have to come through, you know, certain media sources, but you can really just kind of self-advocate and be connected in those type of groups. So, you know, as much as there are negative sides to social media, there's, there is a lot of positives and, um, it's depending on how you utilize it. Now I'm going to go a little bit into the, the other side. And I guess I wanted, I wasn't sure. And we, we talked about this off camera and I wasn't quite mm -hmm. sure how to phrase it, but, um, there is, I would say 50% of our audience listening to this will not be able to relate at all. And I'm, I'm one of them. And <laughs> you, you can hear all the positives of, of social media and, and awareness, but there's also, I use LinkedIn quite a bit. Um, I find it extremely, if you use it properly, it's extremely professional and, and a great way to connect, uh, as well as the other platforms, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, the part that I can't relate to. And unfortunately you can, I guess, how do you deal with it? How do you, uh, overcome, how do you bypass sidestep all of those, the unwanted comments, attention, wh whatever, uh, whatever the negative sides are and I'm, I'm person. I'm asking for, for you, but I'm also asking on behalf of, um, you know, people in my life. And uh, I have a, a, a young daughter, who could be tomorrow's CEO, but she will and most likely be facing yesterday's audience and mindset when it comes to certain things. So, I guess I'm looking for help and guidance and and advice on how you deal with that. No, that's very fair. And I mean, there is a negative side to social media and different platforms. And, you know, it's, it's, we live in the day and age where it's so easy to throw comments behind a screen, but, you know, very rarely anything that I've seen online would someone say right to my face if they were, if they knew me, if they saw me and, you know, had that one-on-one -on -one connection. So um, I think for me, especially my younger self, because obviously, you know, I've come to a, a certain point, 
But I would just say that, you know, you have to have a strong filter, you know, your, your, your phone and that those platforms are essentially a filter to you, right? So if you're able to filter out the negative and that goes for who you follow, that goes for, you know, people you connect with and all of those things um, is filtering out that negative filtering, you know, whether it is, you know, blocking, deleting, unfollowing those accounts um, and focusing on the positive and, you know, choosing to follow it's where you're directing your attention and your focus. And it's a part of life. You know, you will get negative things that come your way and you just really have to roll it off your back um, and know that it's not about you. It's not about, you know, it's whatever they're experiencing is, is their reality, but you don't have to make it your reality. Um, and then also I would say on that note is, you know, just taking responsibility of how you're showing up. Um, and that goes with, you know, how you're showing up, like, you know, in business in general, but also on social media, you know, it, I, to each their own and everyone can show up a different way online. But, you know, if you are going to think about going down the corporate, you know, way, especially as a female, you know, you know, this is a very touchy subject because it can go kind of either way. Right. So we're no, kind no, of totally. stepping right, into yeah. that territory where yeah. it's like, uh, you know, but, um, I think it is important. Like if you want to show yourself, you know, um, in a certain light, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious about the stuff that I put online. I know that anyone can see it, not just, you know, my friends or family, but anyone can find it online. So to be conscientious of that, especially when you are younger, because I think when, you know, I can relate back to myself when, you know, I was back in the day when I was a, a sales rep or, you know, it's a, it's a different connotation versus being a CEO or a founder. So you almost have to think like that when you're at that state and say, this is how I want to show up. This is who I am, or this is what I'm heading towards. And this is, you know, because it does actually help um, pro provide that validity. And I've been in business for a long time and I've, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't got negative doing it that way. You know what I mean? So I think that's the two sides of the coin, you know, take responsibility for setting those boundaries and then take responsibility for how you're showing up. You, you brought up some excellent points and, you know, think, think like a CEO, think like a founder, as yeah. soon as you start going online, uh, yeah. <laughs> back in my day, it was dress for the position that you want, not the one yeah. that you have. And, uh, I can see the, the analogy, what advice would you give <laughs> You said younger self, and I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> what advice would you give your younger self, uh, whether it's your 10 year old self or or the person that is just starting out? Um, I guess based on what you know today. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a hard one for me because there's so many you know pieces of advice that I've gotten over the years and from different courses and mentors and things like that that have definitely helped, but. Um, you know, some of the ones that really stick out is, you know, choose one positive thing per day that's going to get you towards your goal. So it's like of that mindset, right? If you think you're going to be a CEO one day and you're, you know, your daughter, you're 16, but that's your goal is, you know, choose one thing to get you there, you know, and it's, it's, it makes it less daunting because you can, anyone can do one thing a day. And that, that applied to, you know, when I used to, coach people online for their health and fitness journeys. It's like, we, we like to over complicate everything and make it seem like this huge mountain that we have to climb. And, you know, I can never get to the top, but if you just do one thing every single day and you continue to show up and you do one more and one more, um, you know, I, I would say that's the main thing because it, that will focus your attention to where you want to go and you won't get so distracted of all those other things that can pull you away. What would you say has been the biggest hurdle that you've had being a female in the capital market space, maybe there's two hurdles, maybe there's three uh, yeah. that you've experienced to get to where you are and how did you tackle it? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question. Um, there, we So we launched our business in a very different world state. You know, <laughs> we had a pandemic, so there was a lot of just issues with that. So, I mean, when you, when you decide on the path of entrepreneurship, whatever sector you're going to be in, you know that you're going to be facing issues. Like there are a million things that come up in business and you just have to have, you know, a very uh, strong will to keep going and you know, to problem solve. But what I think it comes down to, so I'll kind of go into one. Um, we had uh, delays, you know, hard delays, you know, logistical things that came up 
um, just with the pandemic and everything happening. So, you know, we, we had plans, we had strategies, we had, you know, things in place that we were excited about. And, you know, it, it, it definitely is not great when they're not going the way you planned or the way you thought they would, but you really have to learn how to pivot, um, and change and be able to be flexible as well and understand, okay, Hey, this plan didn't work out. What's our B, B strategy, C strategy, you know, and, and also look, um, proactively at those things and try to fix those things before they arise. Um, and then also I would really, I would really say is like, um, you know, build a good team, right? You know, yes, I am the founder and CEO, but I have a lot of great people on the team that are able to, you know, problem solve with me, or they have different strengths than I do. And so they're able to help, help navigate that territory. So if I know my, you know, my strong suits and my weaknesses, um, and a problem arises, I have someone on that team that's like, oh no, this is my, you know, this is my sector. I know I can, I can help us get through this. Right. So I think that has really made this, you know, last two years of kind of craziness <laughs> a lot better. And then, you know, with the po more positive side is then you can celebrate your wins together as well, because it is, you know, a collective, um, effort. Let's, uh, let's talk about your team. Yeah. Who's, who's on your team? What does your team consist of? And what is the culture? Uh, yummy candy yeah so we have um our management team is comprised of mainly four of us there's suhi she is on our board of directors and so she's the financial side of things um just very good at what she does in terms of you know handling things that you know aren't my forte <laughs> she has the other side and that's what you always want right when you're um, looking for who to partner with and things like that. We have Cassie McCord. She's our CCO. So she does a lot on the um, corporate side, the public side. Um, you might've also talked to her as well. She has experience with the public sectors and different plant-based food companies as well. And we also have another director, Quinn Dite, um, and he holds positions as chief financial officers at uh, different groups like Vantex Resources. And um, he's on the board of multiple public companies. So it's really taking those, you know, mind, you know, minds and together we're a lot stronger. Um, and then we have a great, you know, a great team and, and culture in terms of we go out and we do events, we do a lot of things together, which just helps build that sort of um, camaraderie, especially now it's a little bit harder, right? Because when you're working remote, you don't get that kind of bumping into each other at the office all the time or things like that. So it's nice to have those events where you can get everyone together, you know, um, be able to, yeah, like feel um, part of the team in a person to person sense, because we've kind of got taken away from that in the last two years, but I'm really excited to be able to kind of do more events and more trade shows and things like that, where we're able to really uh, see that face to face contact. Uh, when you, when you come across other, other female CEOs in your position, um, is there sort of a, is there a kindred spirit? I, like you said, going back to the, the 4% number of, uh, public mm. companies have, uh, female, uh, CEO leadership. Is there, is there a kindred connection? Is there the, the, the hand that wants to reach out and, and make sure and, and try to get more in, uh, or is it just business and we're going to just keep plowing along. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it totally has been. And I think, I don't know that if that is more of a female attribute, but we are very much like, a yes, like I, I see you good job, keep going, you know, sort of attitude. Um, I have a lot of strong female entrepreneurs that I'm personally friends with. And, um, you know, we talk business together and it's great to have, um, you know, support because they really understand what you go through. And, you know, it is a bit different than probably being a male versus a female. Right. So same thing, how, you know, I'm sure guys get together and, and <laughs> talk about the same thing. It's, it's nice yeah, to have that. And, and I know it was, right? it was sort of like a, I'm going to ask, <laughs> I don't know. And that, yeah, that's part of yeah. the show is, is trying to find out. Um, you are For obviously sure. becoming and have become a role model and inspiration and did Thank you have any of your own growing up? Yeah, um, for sure. I, 
it sounds so cliche, but my dad was an entrepreneur. And so I got to see through my teenage years, really him grow his company and his business um, and work with his teams and go to his office and see, you know, how they interacted with him. So it was a very, you know, he, he grew up from zero to where they're at today. Um, and mainly by the ages that I was, you know, over 10 to now. So it was kind of in, you know, later parts of my life and really experiencing that, um, it did inspire me and it showed me, you know, the framework and the structure and, you know, the modeling and everything like that. So he's, he's probably my main and it sounds cliche, but it is, it is true for me. Um, and then I had, you know, a lot of other resources that I tapped into, um, in terms of, you know, podcasts, books. I'm so glad we live in the day of information. Um, that's, you know, widely, um, spread out because we're, we have access to it. Right. So, you know, we don't have as many of the hurdles, you know, 20 years ago where you would have to physically read, you know, 14 (laughs) different books on, you know, but now we have even 30 second, 60 second segments where they just give like nice little entrepreneur advice. So, um, you know, Zig Ziglar, he's an OG in sales, Bob Proctor, he's development, Ed Milet, Abraham Hicks, Joe Dispenza. So there's a lot of people that have kind of been pioneers in their field. Um, and I've loved, you know, studying their work and kind of implementing it and taking out those tools that apply for me and incorporating that into, you know, my personal lifestyle and also business. You know, I, I was dating myself because I, my next question was going to be, and, and you, you answered it, but uh, what kind of books did you read in order to <laughs> Gain inspiration. I'm like, oh, wait, maybe there's some programs, podcasts, uh, movies, shows, anything like that, because you can gain inspiration from from everywhere. So, uh, oh, no, of that's course. Really, yeah. Uh, yeah that's I love it. books. I just I don't have a lot of time. So yeah, no, I have no, to. It's... I have Audio to put books, audiobooks on podcasts, and speed it up. I love, I love podcasts. Personally. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, me too. <laughs> Obviously, if we're, if we're yeah. literally doing one. Um, Self advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, no, that's wonderful. Um, if people wanted to find out more information about yummy candy, and if they wanted to trade uh, yummy candy, can you let them know where to find information and what your symbol is? Yes, our symbol on the CSE is T Yum T Y U M, and if you go to yummybear.com, we have all our info on there. Um, we're also on social. So if you, um, look up on Instagram at yummy bear candy, we're on LinkedIn, pretty much, you know, any major, um, social network, and we'd love to get connected. We love hearing feedback. We love hearing from our customers. We're a very young, fresh, innovative company. So, um, yeah, we would love to bring you in part of our, you know, yummy candy culture. Thank you so much, Erica, for taking the time. Uh, thank you to you, your company, the people before you, the people that will be after you for helping us celebrate International Women's Day at the Canadian Securities Exchange. Uh, My name is Barrington Miller. I was with Erica Williams, the CEO and founder of Yummy Candy, even though I'm tempted to call it Yummy Bear. (laughs) That's what people call me, bear, not the yummy part. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Uh, I love that. uh, Please stick around and we will have more episodes celebrating International Women's Day.